Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Primetime Carolina. I'm your host, Tanner Blue, along with my co-host, Dave LaFave. The Panthers finally, with a victory, after three straight losses, Panthers are back at 504 and 4. Dave, feels good. I had to do it. Cheers. The Panthers won a game. This man... This man is a living legend. He had to do it. You know how long he's been waiting to do that? It's been like a month. It's been sitting in my fridge for a month straight. I love it. I love it. Um, I got to be honest with you, man. I did not expect us to win this game at all. <laughs> Which is not, a shame. shame. It, yeah, not because the Falcons are like a good team, just because the way we've been playing, I, I didn't expect much. I really did expect – I didn't really expect much of anything. I just kind of turned the game on. I was just like, oh, like whatever happens, happens. And, you know, you know, it wasn't the best game. Um, but our defense showed out, and that's that's pretty much why we won the game. Our defense was uh, was top notch. Yeah, I think I read Matt Ryan had like 70 net passing yards or something. So defense definitely showed up. And the Panthers finally did what I, what we've been talking about for four weeks. They – Put an emphasis on running the ball. Didn't rely on Sam Darnold as much. You can look at it here, 24, 24 passing attempts rather than the 40 he had been getting the last four weeks, which this is exactly what Sam Darnold needs to be doing, dropping back and throwing 24 times a game, relying on the running attack, and look at what happens. You rely on running the ball, you rely on your good defense, and you come out on top. Man, who would have ever thought this was the formula for the Panthers to win games. Man, I've I watch this podcast every week. This these two guys, they always talk about how the Panthers should run the ball more. And I I swear, I think they finally listened to those guys. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you if you think about it, this was the most diverse backfield I've seen from the Panthers maybe ever. I mean, I think they had three running backs running the ball. They had obviously Chuba Harbor was the lead back. Had Royce Freeman coming in there, and then they had Amir Abdullah, which I like him a lot. I liked him when he was with uh, Detroit. I always thought he was a nice little change of pace back. Um, and they ran the ball effectively, and they just shoved it right down Atlanta's throats repeatedly. And, you know, good defense running the ball, and that's Panthers football right there. So, I mean, they they did what they what they needed to do. Yeah, I mean, I was excited about it. It almost takes you back to the D'Angelo Williams, Jonathan Stewart, and Mike Goodson days. Been a while since we've seen since we've seen three running backs back there. And yeah, Amir Abdul- Abdullah was awesome. Um, he's you know electric back there. He's quick. He definitely gave this offense a, a jolt of energy that they've been needing. Um, you know, with Christian McCaffrey gone, he's able to catch the ball. <clears throat> Chuba Hubbard, I'm looking at you. He's able to catch the ball no problem. So, uh, you know, that's good. And uh, and like you said, you know, I liked him uh, coming into – you know, I liked the signing. I thought he was a great player in college. I liked him with the Lions. And, and you know, like I said, he's done good things for the offense. So, that was cool to see. Um, but, yeah, man, it was just good to see the Panthers finally figure out the formula. Run the ball, play some defense, get some play action in there. Uh, you know, try to get Robbie Anderson murdered. Um you know, in in the play action passing game. But, you know, it was cool. It was cool to finally get a win, man. It was cool to finally get a win. And we mentioned it before we started. The Panthers are now sitting in the seventh seed in the in the playoff race. Which, you know, when I saw that, my jaw hit the floor because <laughs> the playoffs had gone so far from my mind over the last month that I, you know, I didn't even think about it at all. Uh, until I saw it. So, anyway, I don't know. Yeah, um, we'll talk a little bit about the playoffs later. I did see that we are currently you now with the additional playoff spot. We're the seventh seed right now if the playoffs were to start today. Granted, they are, what, we're halfway through the season, played eight games so far. So, we are, um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, we've got a long road to go. I think the toughest parts of our schedule are coming up. Certainly some – I mean, honestly, there's – looking at the schedule, I mean, the Panthers can beat any of the teams they're playing. It's not that 
they can't beat anyone. Um, I think they can compete with anybody. It's just a matter of fact if they can win some of those tough or close games. I just don't think they're going to be able to do that. But, you know, we'll see. Um, Shaq Thompson, man, what a comeback. Yeah. This guy, I swear, if whenever they draft him, if they would have let him wear number seven from the beginning, we'd be in a lot better shape than we'd we are We'd be talking now. about retiring number seven, I think. I mean, number, number seven, Shaq Thompson is a totally different player. Yeah, number 54, Shaq Thompson was very – borderline at best and then number seven Shaq Thompson this dude is a freaking menace to society just blowing people up picking the ball off sniffing out runs making Mm -hmm. crucial tackles I mean I loved it man yeah I think Mike Davis owes him money man they had a something personal going on there with a couple of those hits between Mm -hmm. the two and to give Mike Davis credit he he laid the wood the first time but uh you know Shaq Thompson came back a, a couple times and really put a Nice stick on him. So, I don't know. Something between those guys. It was personal. Hey, and shout out to our boy, the South Carolina Gamecock native, Stephon Gilmore, his first game in a Panthers uniform. Yes, sir. Some good ball and getting his first interception as a Panther in his first game. Yeah, how cool was that to to finally see a trade pay off, pay some dividends (laughs) for us? You know, that was nice. But, man, even – you know, before that interception, he played, you know, he played very limited snaps. Um, you know, he probably played less than 20 snaps the whole game. But when he was in there, he was um, locking in man-on-man with, with Kyle Pitts, and he did a great job. Kyle Pitts caught one pass lined up against Gilmore. I think he only got, you know, five yards off of it. Um, Gilmore broke up, you know, I think another one. Had a tackle in there on a on a third down, third and short, I think. Um, and then, obviously, he got the interception in the end. So, it was really cool to see Stephon Gilmore come in there and uh, show that he's he's still capable of playing, you know, good football. And if he's able to lock down, you know, team's best receivers moving forward, that's a big deal for the Panthers, especially, obviously, without J.C. Horn in the mix, you know, for the foreseeable future. We see, we'll see if he comes back or not. But if they can have another corner step into that role and, and be that lockdown corner, that's a big deal. That's a big deal moving forward for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, you know, even though the secondary isn't 100% healthy, I think this is probably, and I could be wrong, I think this is probably the best secondary the Panthers have ever had. Yeah, I mean, and and we've been hard on the defense, uh, you know, over the last four games, and honestly, I'm not going to back away from it. I feel like it's still deserved over, you know, the way they performed over this losing streak. Um, not that they've been horrible, but they haven't been dominant. They haven't been, you know, a go out and win us the game type of defense. But I think now that they're getting guys back, you can start to see it come back together. It's starting to look more like the defense we saw at the beginning of the season. Um, yeah. You know, so who knows, you know, the, the NFL is so week to week. Things change so quick, you know. And uh, moving forward, you know, I've – we were so down in the dumps two weeks ago. I don't want to let one win over a bad team start, you know, changing where I'm at mentally and I'm starting to think playoffs and everything. But it was good to see us get a win. And, you know, we need to just take it one week at a time, see what we can do. It's good to see the defense, you know, coming together again. And, again, on offense, we did what we were supposed to be doing all year, and that's running the ball taking it out of Sam Darnold's hands, making his decision-making a lot easier. And I think, you know, you saw it in this game. It, it, it pays off. It wasn't a pretty game. But in the end, we came out on top. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. This was classic Panthers football. And I'm on the same, the same wavelength as you, you know. You know, you whenever you've been down like this, when, you know, kind of rejuvenates you, you start to think about all the positives and be really optimistic. I don't want to get too crazy because, you know, the Panthers are 4-4, four and four, you know, obviously still the road. And, you know, the Falcons aren't the best team in the NFL, certainly either. So, um, just keep my expectations limited. Um, I know this week we've got a tough game against uh, New England. Certainly not the Patriots of old, but, you know, when you got Bill Belichick on your side and you got a good defense, it's always going to be a tough game no matter what. And I think statistically, I'm not sure what the Panthers' record is against the Patriots. I know for a while they used to beat up on us pretty bad, but I think the last couple of times we played them when we had Cam Newton, 
Um, he's undefeated against the Patriots, I think. Yeah, right. Cam was 2-0 and against the Patriots. Um, I think the last time we lost to the Patriots, I believe, was 2009 um, when Matt Moore was the quarterback. Yeah. And then we, sorry, what would you say? I was saying, yeah, that, that probably seems about right. And then, uh, what, or something, 2013? Something like that. No, 2000 I – think, I think it was 2010 maybe. Oh, I can't remember. Anyway, and then I remember we beat them once with Jake DeLome, like right after the Super Bowl. And that's all the matchups with them I can remember. You know, we only and play them every four years, so. No one could ever forget that Monday night matchup against the Patriots yeah, in Carolina. Um, the – Infamous was it past interference in the end zone? Ice up, son. In the classic ice up, son. At the end, man, yeah. that was Cam a Newton signature moment with the walk off touchdown to Ted Ginn. A man, lot of classic a, Panthers moments came out of that game for sure. That was a magical year. Obviously, 2015 is the year that gets the most like hype and credibility, but 2013 was a fun year too because we were just young quarterback and just. You had Steve Smith still, and you just had, like, a, this kick-ass defense that would just smash people. It was awesome, man. I really enjoyed that year. Well, that was a year that, you know, we had been waiting on for so long. Uh, you know, basically since 2008, the last time, you know, the team was relevant, uh, you know, before that year. And then it was like John Fox was out. We got a new coach, drafted Cam Newton, um, drafted Luke Keekley, started putting this entirely new team together. And uh, that was the first year it all really came together. And obviously, we finished 12 and four. And, it, you know, that's what, you know, we're kind of going through again right now. It's, it's a change of the guard, new coach, new team. You know, everything's different. And that's what we're waiting for with this team is everything to come together. And, you know, they're really on the same trajectory as that team, if you take a step back and look at it. And really, the John Fox teams, too. Um, yeah. It takes, that, it takes that third year. I think both of those coaches, Ron Rivera and John Fox, uh, it was the third year where everything really came together. So, yeah, I think we can so. Keep improving, you know. Yeah, we're on the same track here. So you know, we just got to keep that up. Um, I don't have a ton to really say about this game. I mean, it wasn't a high scoring affair by any means, but it was just solid Panthers football. I didn't make a ton of mistakes, and they played some really really good defense. Um, you know, Sam Darnold didn't do a ton. And speaking of Sam Darnold. You know, looking statistically, he didn't have the best game, but he played. Um, he played a lot. Of, made a lot of crucial plays on third down that were, um, you know, with his legs, which was yeah. nice to see. Unfortunately, one of those resulting in a concussion, um, leaving his status up in the air for this upcoming Sunday. Have you heard any more information about that? Or all I've heard is that PJ Walker is going to play if he's not available. Obviously, but you know, honestly, I'm. I'm not too optimistic he's going to play. I just have a feeling that it's going to be P.J. Walker's team this week. Um, I'm a little disappointed the team didn't try to push for maybe a more solid quarterback uh, with the trade deadline today. Um, You know, I think Sam Darnold's had such an up-and-down season already. In my opinion, it would have been smart to go ahead and try to find somebody a little more steady-handed to put back there at quarterback. And then with Darnold getting to concussion, it's almost like you had a free pass to go get another quarterback. And then you can blame it on his injury. You know what I mean? You could say, well, he had a concussion. We wanted to get somebody else in for, for this week or whatever. And then down the line, you have another guy in case Sam Darnold takes that turn that he took the last few weeks where he was just horrible. But, you know, I, yeah. again, they're so worried about shaking his confidence. I think that's probably the biggest reason they didn't make a move like that. I think that you're right. Um, I was very shocked that they didn't try to do something. I mean, there are certainly guys out there in free agency, one of them which we know very, very, very well. Um, Facts. I didn't expect that to happen, if I was being honest with you. Is like as much as I'd love it, I'd probably cry. I'd be so happy. Um, right. I just, I just didn't see it happening. Um, and if you don't know, what we're talking about we're talking about Cam Newton, obviously maybe coming back. That didn't seem to happen. 
Um, I looked all week for reports and I, I didn't see anything. So, and it's, we're already on Tuesday night, Wednesday morning when this comes out, he won't be playing for us. Yeah. It's tough to watch, you know, some of these quarterbacks play in the league so far this year, knowing that Cam Newton's sitting on the bench. And I, I think Cam Newton would be a great option for us at quarterback, even if, you know, they try – oh, I guess they couldn't really stick with Darnold. But, I th- I mean, I think what it boils down to, honestly, is Matt Rule made the decision that he wasn't going to go with Cam. And at this point, it's kind of an ego thing. He doesn't want to admit that he was wrong. He doesn't want, you know, the face of the franchise that was there before he was there back in the mix being the guy that everyone looks to, you know, it, it's, it kind of sucks. Cause it's like, I feel like he is a better option for the team, but I just don't see it happening. I mean, just think of the storyline here. If you think about it, Panthers are at this point in the season four and four, their starting quarterback goes down. They bring back the guy who's their best player ever. And he leads them to like a wild card birth something happens I mean like like I get it and I don't get it for one I get it because they chose to get rid of the guy it's a lot of hard feelings still there probably and it's you know he's not like their guy and I get that but at the same time you know that's a guy that was beloved by a lot of fans and it's just a better it's not even got anything to do with fanfare it's just a probably the best quarterback option who just so happened to play for that team who also just happened to play for the team you're playing against. The week. So there's a lot of good there. And I just, I just was kind of pissed. I didn't even see like a rumor that this was maybe rumored. It just nothing at all. It was just all speculation. And, you know, I'm not a big PJ Walker fan. I mean, he can do some things here and there, but, you know, it's going to be tough to beat New England with a backup quarterback. And I honestly think with a guy like Cam Newton, this would have completely re-energized this team completely. And I do think it comes down to an ego thing. I think that if they signed Cam Newton, they would play good ball, won a couple games, quarterback controversy, and they just didn't want to have that. They didn't want to have that tough situation, that tough conversation. So it kind of sucks to see if i got to be honest. Yeah, I agree. It does kind of suck because I think, you know, like we said, at the end of the day, I think it's the best option, but they just don't want to admit that they were wrong. And I think, honestly, if you drop Cam Newton this offense, I think he tears it up. I think he was playing really well for New England, you know, when they let him go. I think he acts, I think he played much better than he gets credit for last year on a really bad team where his best receiver was, you know, a, a, a quarterback in college. Um. And, you know, their defense had a bunch of opt-outs because of COVID. Um, they were not the same New England Patriots. And he inherited the team very late. Uh, he didn't, you know, join the team till very late, um, you know, right before the preseason started. I don't remember exactly when it was, but I think it was right before the preseason started he joined the team. So he missed out on training camp and everything. So yeah, it's, it's just, it's, it, yeah, you know, it sucks. You know, because I think even if Sam Darnold is winning games the way they won on Sunday, running the ball and playing defense, I think it's pretty clear he's not the best option for the team moving forward. He's not going to be that franchise guy. He's at best going to be a game manager who gets you to the playoffs and then loses. And you know what you do if that's not your option – is you try to find someone that's better and who better than a guy that, you know, was a former MVP on this team um, would be, this would be the most talent he ever had if he was on the Panthers. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, The offensive line's still terrible, but that's something. (laughs) He's used to that. (laughs) Used to something that we're used to, and there's not much we can do about that. But, you know, if this team had Cam Newton on it, this team would, I would even he's not Cam Newton of 2015 and old. I'd still would like his chances more, and you know it just kind of sucks to see. Um, let's say they lose this game, and you know what? That's 
I don't know. It just it's kind of just a a, a loose. I just don't think how you can be like super comfortable if you're in in a winning mindset to just roll out with PJ Walker as your starting quarterback and not even and they didn't even I think they brought in like some random guys to be backups like whatever. but man there were other guys there were other guys and it just kind of sucks yeah dude put some respect on Josh Love's name signed off the Rams practice squad superstar Josh dude you don't know Josh Love dude Dude, I always been a Josh Love fan, dude. I'm a day dude, one I Josh have... Love, dude. I have his jersey, dude. I watched every single game as. No, I'm just counting. I don't know who Josh Love is. Nobody knows who Josh Love is. Come on, dude. Really? That's your. That's what we're gonna roll it. We're gonna roll into Sunday's game with PJ Walker and Josh Love as our quarterbacks. That's like the only situation worse than walking into a game with Sam Darnold as your quarterback. And it's not only that. We're a team that's looking for a quarterback. There are other teams, too, that are dealing with injuries, like the Saints and teams that have struggling quarterback play, and they aren't bringing in anyone at all. So The Saints could are rumored just, are, are being linked to Phillip Rivers, but that's about it, which man, seems like I a just, really dumb move. Yeah. Well, Speaking I, of teams that should go get Cam Newton, the Saints should go get Cam Newton. Yeah, I just – I don't know, man. It just seems – it just seems very odd to me. So, you know, not saying that it wouldn't happen. Let's say the Panthers get freaking smoked in this game and Sam Darnold can't play again. It's going to be pretty hard to justify bringing P.J. Walker back to start again. But I don't know. We'll see. We're taking it a game at a time. So, moving on to the game this weekend, playing against the Patriots. Um, you know, I'm. this game is a toss-up to me. I think this is a game that if the Panthers run the ball well and they play solid defense – they could – this could be another low scoring slobber knocker. They could win this game. You could also see Belichick completely out-coaching us, out-classing us, and us just not playing very well. Right. Well, we've seen, you know, so far this year, especially against good defenses, Mac Jones struggle a little bit. So, it's definitely come down to what our defense can do as far as getting after him, forcing him into making some poor decisions. But – at the same time, I think the difference between us and New England is they've done a good job of running the ball more and taking some of that pressure off of him. They don't mind being a running team. For some reason, we fought it every step of the way this year. So, uh, you know, I agree. I mean, I think we can win this game, but we cannot come out throwing the ball, trying to, trying to act crazy, especially with, you know, we're probably going to have a backup quarterback. Um, and I, I like PJ Walker, but he's not a guy I want to carry the load and go win the game. No, and I agree a hundred percent and I feel the same way. Um, I think this is, these teams matched up very well together. Um, I'm certainly not the thing that uh, makes me, you know, a bit excited and gives us the good chances that I've, I've watched a lot of Patriots games this year because, you know, my girlfriend and her family are Patriots fans. I've watched a good bit of their games. Um, you know, Mac Jones is about what he would be. He's not terrible, but he's not going to do anything special. So I'm not necessarily worried about him. Um, the Patriots don't have a ton of weapons that I think the Panthers, their secondary matches up well with anybody. Yeah. So I'm not really worried about throwing the ball on us, or I think we can stop the run. Um, I think this is going to come down to if our offense can generate enough uh, enough points to, you know, it doesn't have to be a ton. I think if we can score 20, 25 points, I think we'll win this game. And the, Pan or the Patriots just did beat the Chargers, who are a very good team this year, so you never know. Yeah, again, it's a week-to-week -week league for sure. And, you know, when you give Bill Belichick – time he's going to start figuring things out you know no matter what he has at his disposal so the Patriots are obviously yeah. on the right track we finally won a game to get us back on the right track the Patriots have a good defense um you know I think I, it's, it's going to come down to who's going to make the least mistakes I think so that puts a, a lot of pressure on PJ Walker the best thing you can do is take that pressure off of him try to run the ball 
Uh, but, you know, obviously we saw Chuba Hubbard fumble in the first carry this week, so it's not like <laughs> running the ball is a sure thing either. But, um, you know, you have, to, you have to think our chances are about 50-50. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a really good matchup for both teams. They're both pretty evenly matched. Um, only thing is coaching, and I think the Patriots win that battle easily. <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, I, I don't know. We'll see. I think it's going to be a close game. Um, if the Panthers do win, who is our, uh, who's our next opponent? Or is it a bye week after that? Uh, I think after the Patriots, it's the Cardinals. Mm. Let's see. Yep, Cardinals. The so dreaded, that's the dreaded you know, 405 kickoff. Oh, the Panthers have never played well at four o'clock ever. Um that's yeah, that's a tough one. And we're getting into the part the tougher part of our schedule here, you know. Washington, you know, Washington and Miami are winnable games. I'm not, you know, I'm not concerned about those could go those games could go either way. They can win or they can lose, but it's not, certainly not a tough game. Um, Falcons, I think we can beat them, especially in Carolina. I'm hoping so. The Bills, that's going to be a tough one. Um, that's probably going to be a loss. Yeah. The four games are going to be a tough one. And at the Saints, the last four games, I could see the Panthers going 0 and 4 in all those games. Um, yeah. but at the same time, it's also possible that, you know, at the end of, if we're still in the wild card position, that last game against the Bucks, they might not they might rest their guys, gives us a chance to get a win, like a free win, kind of. And then with the Saints, it depends on um how well they do. You see, it's it, no matter who it is, it's hard for me to get down on the Saints because they always seem to figure it out. Drew Brees hurt. Ted Brees oh, they're going to suck. They go eight and no. Drew Brees is going to retire. They're going to suck. They bring in Jameis Winston. He's 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 okay. Yeah, he's they're what five he gets two. hurt. They've got Trevor Simeon. I'm sure they'll go like seven and zero to finish the season because that's just how it works for them. Well, even <laughs> when you think back to 2015 when we played them in what was it week three, we barely squeaked out with a win. Josh Norman made that crazy interception in, at the end of the game, but they almost beat us the year we went 15 and one. They almost beat us with I think it was Luke McCown at quarterback that day. So. They're just a good, you know, they've always got a good defense. They have a good offense. Sean Payton knows what he's doing. They can pretty much plug anyone back there at quarterback and at least make it work to an extent. Yeah, so it's hard for me to look at that game and justify, oh, they don't have their quarterback. That's only um, it's hard for me to say that. So those games could go either way. Uh, they could go two and two or go and four. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, facts. But, um. But yeah, I, uh, I'm looking forward to this weekend. It's going to be a big, uh, big statement game for the Panthers if they can. Um, you know, they're you're looking at a really solid team, and you're looking at trying to get back on track, trying to get to five and four. And if I think, if you asked me at the beginning of the season and told me now the midway through the season the Panthers would be four and four, I would say that would sound pretty on par with me. I don't think it would go the way that I thought it would win three in your first three and then lose four in a row. But I think four and four sounded about right. Right, exactly. That's the way, you know, I'm looking at it now. It's like as disappointing as the last four weeks were or, you know, before this week, last four weeks were. Four and four is basically right where we expected to be, you know, around 500 or, you know, at least finishing the season around 500. So if we can – stay on par with where we're at, you know, squeak a game out here and there, finish nine and eight. We probably have a shot at stealing that last playoff spot. So, and then, you know, making that last playoff spot was really all we had hoped for, for this season in the beginning anyway. So as bad as it seemed for four weeks, we're really right where we thought we, where we hoped we would be really not even where we thought we, were, we would be, where we hoped we would be. You know, we want it to be a team pushing for a playoff spot. And right now that's what we are. So I guess it's time for us to stop complaining and, you know, start enjoying the ride. Yeah, I think, 
you know, and I don't, I, I mean, you know, fans get mad. I don't necessarily think it's so much just us complaining. I just think it's the way that it happened. Sure. Because you got off to the fast start and you get excited. And just to lose the games they did right. the way they did, it'd be different if one lost the other, won the other. Win the, like, if they were kind of just trading wins and losses, but to start the 3-0 and and then lose, it just was like, damn, what right. is going on? And to so, lose a bunch of games they should have won. Correct. Now, it'll be one thing if we lost games to teams that were just better than us. But to lose to teams that, you know, are about even par or you think worse than you, that's a tough one. And in the way they lost them, too. Yeah, right. No, I agree with you. But, you know, we talk about it all the time. When you're talking about the NFL, you've got to, you know, teach yourself to, to keep some perspective, which is always hard to do. You know, over a, over a seventeen game season, it's so hard to, you know, remember that it's a week to week league and yeah. I mean, that. absolutely. Um, and you know, we're kind of on the track for what we thought. Um, kind of want to touch base on a couple, you know, just NFL stuff in general. Um, trade deadline stuff. Von Miller going to the Rams and the Rams. I hope they win the Super Bowl because if they don't, they have zero draft picks for like next. 10 years um <laughs> yeah right yeah so hopefully they uh I, th- I think Stafford made the right choice this year you know going there instead of going to Carolina but hmm. yeah I think he made a good choice yeah. uh shout out to the Rams they're making moves that they're trying to win and then you got the Chiefs making move for Melvin Ingram the Chiefs man I haven't watched what's been going on but you know I kind of just thought it might have been a fluke but man they're really struggling this year yeah, we talked about last week when we lost the Giants, we talked about how we just got beat by a bad team. And then they turn around and, you know, the Chiefs barely beat them. So yeah. Their struggles continue. Yeah, they're struggling. Uh, Mahomes is struggling and the defense is playing bad as well. Um, and then in, you know, a lot sadder news, um, I did see today that Henry Ruggs, the third, who's a receiver for the Raiders. I don't know all the details. I haven't looked super into it. I just know what the headlines and things I've seen on the surface, that he was involved in some sort of DUI crash that related to the death of another person. I guess that he's in a management. That's, that's nuts, man. That's terrible to hear. Yeah, absolute tragedy, man. Absolute tragedy for everybody involved. I mean, it's hard to see – you know, a player throw away not only his career, but his life, really, because how do you how do you come back from this? And then obviously I mean, another yeah. person was killed in the process, which is horrible, you know. Prayers up for, you know, her and her family. I mean, it's just – it's horrible. And, you know, the NFL gives free rides to their players. They have a card in their wallet with a number they can call for someone to come pick them up. They don't even have to use Uber. They really? They don't have to use Lyft. I didn't so know that. When these things happen, it's just that much crazier because you literally could call someone to come get you, you know, no questions asked. And stuff like this still happens. So it's tough. It's real tough. Yeah, um, I didn't know that about the the card thing. I mean, I could see yeah. that maybe with like like star players, maybe, but I didn't know that. Um, but yeah, that's you know, I don't know. I haven't read a ton on the situation. I don't know exactly what you know all the fine details were, but that's just what I know now. You know, it's just unfortunate, um, you know, for him because you know to you know he just. Made a made a really bad decision that you know unfortunately cost someone else's you know their life and then you know has probably cost him his NFL career and you know some life in general that he might spend behind bars. Um, and he was yeah a pretty good player for the Raiders and man I, the Raiders are going through a lot this year with that and then they've got the whole John Gruden thing. It's just like you know they've 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 had quite a few things go on in their organization this year unfortunately. Yeah. It's very unfortunate. It's always sad to see someone young throw away such an opportunity, but it's even worse to see somebody die who, you know, 
wasn't doing anything wrong. Yeah. She was just I mean, minding her business and, and she got killed by someone who made a bad decision. So it's unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate. Um, but to kind of end things on a little bit of a lighter note, um, what's uh, what's been going on? I haven't kept up a ton with injury report. Obviously, it's been out, but what's what's going on with Justin Burris? Is he like out for the year? From what I understand, he's supposed to be back. Um, maybe fairly soon. I know they put him on injury reserve, but uh, now with the new rule, that's only you know three weeks off. So I think he's he's been out for three weeks at this point. But I, you know, I think he's you know should be back fairly soon. Uh, actually, we can look at it right here. Yeah, because I feel like I feel like he's been out for a while, and then yeah, I know he has um, been out for a while. Um, then obviously, oh, there you go. Was designated right. to return from injury reserve on Wednesday, so that was last Wednesday. Okay. Right. Obviously, we're not sure about McCaffrey. We never really are. Terrace Marshall, he's been hurt. Sucks to see him out. Yep. Um, and then C.J. Henderson, you know, yeah, that's a crowded secondary. There isn't a ton of room for a lot of guys to play. And this is a guy that they traded a third-round pick for. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it, it's tough because you got guys like – you got Stephon Gilmore. Obviously, you got J.C. Horn. He's injured. He's another guy that's in the lineup in the future. Then you've got Keith Taylor, who's been a freaking baller this year. And then you've got guys like uh, Stanley Thomas Oliver, who's playing good football. And then you've got, um, obviously, Dante Jackson, who's in a contract year. So this is a crowded, crowded secondary, and there's not room for everybody next year. So it's yeah. tough for him to be out because he, you know, this is a guy they believe in in the future. You know, you got Stephon Gilmore, J.C. Horn, and, you know, A.J. Boye forgot him as well. I mean, there's guys all over the secondary. Yeah, our secondary is stacked, man. Um, obviously, the C.J. Henderson trade hasn't, you know, paid off exactly like they hoped it would yet, but I'm not giving up hope that it won't. I'm definitely – Still holding out hope for C.J. Henderson and come back and, and make his presence felt. You know who was a player that I held out, like, a lot of hope for and, like, I just thought he was going to be a complete monster and it just never happened? Was it Ian Thomas? No. Because I'm, I'm, that's, that's who it is for me. Well, but I, I've never been so hyped about an Ian Thomas, like, fourth-round draft pick in my life. I was like, this dude's going to be a beast, and it just – hasn't happened unfortunately for me it is a tight end though it was a uh, good old brandon williams swole bones yeah i'm telling you man he, he was another one man, what is up with us in tight ends who just show so much promise in the beginning and then just fade away dude this man was like ungodly jacked i was like there's no way this guy can't be good yeah and, just, and it, just a just freak like, athlete man just a freak a freak athlete and just Never really panned out because I remember the beginning of the year we're going to do like our all time like training camp team, which we should do that next year, and uh, I think that'd be really funny. And then I will set high hopes for uh, for Kiaris Garrett. Remember, him? I thought he was going to be like an absolute deal in the draft, and I don't even think he made the practice squad. He might have, but <laughs> yeah. And I think it was him who made like a sick catch in the preseason, like a sick one handed catch. And we were all it didn't even like, count, actually. Yeah, I mean, I think he was out like of bounds. One foot out of bounds, I think. But we were just like, oh my God, this guy is insane. He's going to be so good. And it was like, cut the next week or like two weeks or whatever. Like, it's, it's crazy in like preseason. You watch these guys. I mean, you know, they're not playing top level starters, but you see these guys and you're like, this guy's going to be so good. And then they get cut. And it's just like, how, like, how do you know this guy isn't going to be any good? And then, they just scout some coaches. They just know. Like, it's weird. Yeah. I guess, you know, you have an eye for it when you see it every day. You know what you're looking for, I guess. Yeah. So, um, hey, I also thought Jimmy Clausen was going to be good. I was wrong. What's funny is I was just thinking about that the other day. Just, like, how much how much of an idiot this team will make me be. <laughs> Because there was a time where I was like, 
walking around telling people like, dude, Jimmy Clausen's a future, dude. You just got to give him, you just got to give him some time. You just got to even like, no, he's still developing. Like he's still a young quarterback. He doesn't understand like the NFL yet. Like he's, you know, he's new to the, he's still learning the offense. He doesn't, he doesn't quite get it yet. Check down Charlie, man. Check down Charlie. Man, man, those were some tough years. And then, I remember when we drafted him, I got so hyped. I was like, oh, my God, I know this I'm guy played quarterback for Notre Dame. Like, he's going to be good. And I'm telling you. Right. Well, they had him as, like, a top ten pick. You know? Yeah. Mel Kuyper, like, bet his life on Jimmy Clausen to be a successful <laughs> NFL quarterback, and he's still doing his job. He's a liar. He said he was going to quit if Jimmy Clausen wasn't successful. They should have held him to do that. Yeah. ESPN should have held him accountable, man. They're like, no, you they said you were going to quit. And then just tore up his contract on live TV, on the pre-draft show. That's what they should have done. You know, when I was younger, like, I would watch, like, a lot of, like, I don't know, like, college games. And it's just like, oh, I bet this guy's going to be good. Like, you were uh, the guy we drafted, like, a long time ago named uh, Tony Pike. Oh, yeah. Cincinnati. Dude, I always thought Tony – I used to watch him in college. Like, this dude's going to be an absolute <laughs> steal in the draft. Yeah. And they picked him in, like, the fourth or fifth round, whatever – Six round, dude. Six round. Six round. Okay, so six round. Yeah. And I think he put a little bit in the preseason, and it just never, never anything, nothing ever happened. And I was just like, man, I always thought he was going to be like, he might be good. No, especially when you're like a kid, you really don't understand like the the like college to NFL transition. And like, yeah. what's his name? That dude who just died from Hawaii. Uh, yeah, Col- uh, Colt Brennan. Colt Brennan. Colt Brennan. Yeah. You see guys like Colt Brennan, you're like, this is the most amazing quarterback I've ever seen. Like 50, 60 touchdowns, 5,000 yards. Then he gets to the NFL and he's like, fourth string practice squad. Yeah. But him and guys like uh, like Graham Harrell and just those guys yeah. that they're from like 60, 70 touchdowns. Like, how do you not pick this guy up? And then you just see, like, it's right. a different skill set. And it's same thing, like, a- whenever, like, whenever yeah, I was yeah. younger, like, to me, like when I was a kid, like Tebow was like the most amazing college player of all time. I was like, dude's a freaking monster. And then in the NFL, you know, he had his little run he had, but it just never was able to stick. No, yeah, he wasn't even close to having like NFL arm talent. Like not even a, even a little bit close. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree. So it's weird seeing that like that that skill level like difference, so, like what yeah. you see versus like what like scouts and coaches see the the next level. Like like when I played in high school, like I played with guys I was like dude, guys are straight to the NFL. Couldn't even sniff the field in college. It was crazy. Yeah, facts. You don't I mean, I think sometimes whenever you're in it like that, you don't realize like how a how big the world is and then b like how big of a jump it is to the next level yeah like absolutely so i don't know we're just rambling at this point because we're four and four we don't know what's gonna happen we're gonna go up or down Ugh, your Either team's way. under 500 dude don't even look at me Ugh. Didn't Ugh, talk you to disgusting me, piece of filth with your under 500 team Ugh. More losses Trap. than wins. How do you sleep at night? Very sad, but hey, we're uh, we're gonna see what happens. See if we can uh, win this game on Sunday. Get to, get to, uh, over five hundred, and then after that, we'll uh, see if we can lose to the Cardinals and get back to five and five. Hey, that's how we do it around here, baby. Five. Hey, this is uh, this is standard Panther stuff here. We are used to living life in the five hundreds. Either hey, right bro. above it or right below it or right hey, in the middle. How do you stay mediocre forever? You stay 500. You, hey, that's you, right. You don't sniff we the don't, top of the draft. You don't, you don't touch championships. Stay right in the middle. So your life is literally horrible all the time. It's perfect. Hey, we don't, um, we don't keep it 100. We keep it 500. Yeah, we keep it, fi- we keep it 500. 500. So. <laughs> But, all right, that's all we got for tonight. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching it as usual. This will be up in the morning. Go Panthers. We're going to beat the Patriots on Sunday, and um, we'll be above 500. Yeah, keep pounding. See you guys. Go Ian Thomas. <laughs>